Hello, I'm Gordon Lang, editor of CameraLabs.com. I'd like to give you a brief video tour around the Sony Alpha DSLR A700. Here it is, the A700. It's Sony's second ever digital SLR and the first model which Sony has designed 100% by itself. Now the A700 is targeted at a semi-professional or a high-end enthusiast market and as such it has a number of features that you won't find on the earlier A100. So let's have a look at the more important ones. First of all, resolution. The A700 features 12.2 megapixels and Sony switched its sensor technology from CCD to CMOS for this model. Now before you get too excited, it's not a full frame sensor. The CMOS chip inside here is physically the same size as the CCD chip that you'll find in the A100. But on the upside, that means that it's fully compatible with the complete range of Sony lenses and third party models including the DT lenses. And because the A700 also features built-in stabilisation, all of those lenses that you attach effectively become anti-shake models. Although, like other built-in stabilisation systems, you won't see the effect through the optical viewfinder. Now, one of the other big differences between the A700 and the A100 before it is build quality. Now, this is a physically bigger camera than the A100 and it feels much tougher. But then, catering for the semi-pro market, it has to be tough. Those kind of users also want faster continuous shooting. And if I just take the AU700 now, you'll see that it's got five frames per second, so it's a lot quicker than the A100 before it. It's also got a pentaprism instead of a pentamirror, which gives you a bigger, brighter view through the viewfinder, a new 11-point autofocusing system, and a number of other features that are fairly unique to Sony. But perhaps the most spectacular of all is the screen. Sony's equipped this with a 3-inch screen that's incredibly detailed and I'm going to show you more about that in just a moment. But first of all, you'll be relieved to see that it's got exactly the same feature as the A100, which is that if you turn the camera to a portrait orientation, either that way or this way, you'll see that the information turns to stay upright. This is a really nice feature to have in practice. Now let's have a look around the A700's controls. You'll notice that it's got both a finger and a thumb wheel here, which is handy for separately adjusting things like the aperture and the shutter speed. If I open up the door at the side, you'll see that it takes compact flash memory cards, but also Sony memory sticks in here. Looking to the top right surface of the body, it's got a nice soft touch shutter release here and some very large buttons with dedicated access to things like the sensitivity and drive mode. Although you will notice that in this area, on most semi-pro cameras, you'd actually have a second display. Not so with the A700, Sony reckons that the 3-inch display on the back is sufficient for all circumstances. But it's worth looking at these buttons again. Great big buttons with only one function and again things like a dial here for adjusting the metering mode. You'll notice that the A700's controls generally only have one function, they don't double up for anything, which means that you can very quickly and easily adjust certain settings. And you'll also see that the buttons themselves are quite large and they're easily operated if you're wearing gloves, and that's a great feature if you're a semi-pro user. Now let's have a look at the other side of the camera, and here's the main mode dial here with the usual mode settings, although there's one here labelled MR, that's for memory return, and it actually allows you to call up one of three custom settings. you also notice that this dial and the on-off switch here are also very chunky, quite larger than normal, and that again allows you to very easily operate this camera when you're wearing gloves. Now finally, let's have a look at some of the ports that are on the side. There's a proper PC sync port here for connecting to studio lighting, and alongside the normal USB and TV output under this flap here, you'll notice this port here is actually an HDMI port. Now this allows it, the camera to connect to high definition televisions digitally and provide a really nice looking picture for those slideshows. Now let's take a closer look at the A700 screen, and this really is one of the highlights of the camera, not just because it's a decent size at 3 inches, but because it's incredibly detailed. With 640 by 480 pixels, it's actually got four times the detail of most digital camera screens, and this allows Sony to use some incredibly smooth looking fonts, and also display an enormous amount of detail when you're playing back images. So let's have a look at some of that. The first thing to notice in the bottom left corner is the battery indicator. Now you'll see that there's actually a percentage number next to it, and that's because Sony's using a proper infralithium battery and it tells you exactly how much charge is remaining. And that's an incredibly useful feature to have instead of an icon that just says, I'm half full or I'm about to run out. 
Now the A700 features dedicated controls for almost all of its settings but it also offers an alternative means to adjust them. If you press the function button to the bottom right of the screen you'll see that an option there at the bottom has been highlighted orange. Now this represents the compression settings and you can actually adjust it by turning the dial. Alternatively you can push the joystick in the middle and bring up the options here and you'll see that there's a new extra fine JPEG mode and also the choice of compressed RAW or uncompressed RAW files with or without a fine JPEG. If you press the function button again you can use the joystick to actually move this orange highlighted area to some other settings that you might want to change, maybe the exposure compensation and you also notice this flash compensation there or maybe the ISO. Let's have a look at that menu there and you'll see that the ISO scale which starts at 100 ISO goes all the way up to not just 3200 but all the way to 6400 ISO. Like the A100 before it you can also press the display button to the left of the screen to reformat the fonts to a larger size. This means you don't get as much information on the screen but it is a bit more readable. Now let's have a look at the menu system and as you can see Sony's really exploited that high resolution display to come up with some really smooth looking fonts and icons here. There's also three whole pages of custom settings, that's 21 custom settings in all so there's plenty of things to adjust on this camera. Now let's have a look at playback and this is a picture that we took earlier. Now playing back images on the A700 is one of the highlights of using this camera because the screen just looks so detailed. You can see an awful lot on your pictures, they look absolutely fantastic. But of course you can display some other information as well. Pressing the display button to the left of the screen will overlay some shooting details. Pressing it again will overlay five thumbnails running along the top and you can use the joystick to move between them. The nice thing about these thumbnails is that they may be small but the high resolution screen allows you to see an awful lot of detail in them. Speaking of thumbnails you can also display 4, 9 or even 25 if you like. And if you want some more detailed shooting information just press the C button to the right of the screen and you can show RGB and separate brightness histograms again along with some shooting information below the picture and because the screen is so detailed none of this looks compromised in any way. So as you can see the Sony A700 offers a great deal to the semi-pro market but there's just one more feature that I want to show you. There's an optional portrait grip that houses two batteries for extended battery life and of course this allows you to hold the camera much more comfortably in a portrait configuration and there's replication of all the controls, the shutter release button, the various thumb and finger dials and all the controls here on the back. Sony's Alpha A700 is a very impressive digital SLR and one that will greatly appeal to enthusiasts. The build quality and handling are very good. The position and design of the controls are very considerate to photographers who might have to wear gloves. The three inch screen round the back is an absolute revelation. It looks fantastic I and mean, we really just can't do it justice in a video like this. So make sure you go out and see it in person. The built in anti shake genuinely proved effective on the lenses we tested it with. Although it's important to note like other built in anti shake systems you won't see the effect through the optical viewfinder. In terms of image quality, don't expect a big step up from 10 megapixel models, but the pictures are still very good from the A700, although personally we felt they could do with a bit of extra sharpening, but that's something you can easily apply in camera or using software later. So far so good, but it's not all good news for the A700. Now, you may love live view or you might hate it, but it's unusual not to find it on a model of its class. It's also unusual not to find an upper status screen here. Now these big buttons are nice if you're wearing gloves but equally there'll be photographers who would prefer to find a screen here. They're very useful to have under very bright conditions or equally dark ones when you don't want a big screen like this at the back ruining your dark adapted vision. It's also interesting to note that this camera doesn't have an optional Wi-Fi transmitter and things like Wi-Fi, Live View and an upper status screen are things that you'll find on both the Canon EOS 40D and Nikon's D300 both of those are going to be big rivals for the Sony A700 and ultimately you really have to weigh up these models and the Olympus E3 very very carefully. They're all very very strong products but some will have a feature set that will suit you better than the others. It's also crucial to pick them up in person because one of these cameras will also look and feel better to you than the other models and that should probably be the one that you should go for. If you would like to see how the Sony A700 does compare against models like the EOS 40D and also the EOS 5D, they have the same resolution but does that big full frame sensor on the Canon still have a benefit? You can find out by heading over to www.cameralabs.com because there you'll find our full review of the Sony Alpha A700.